Hey, oh my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we have an amazing recreation of one of the oldest operating amusement parks in the United States, a fan favorite, so stay tuned and let's check it out. Welcome back everybody. If you guys are new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button. If you end up enjoying the video, leave a like. If you want to be a part of the amazing Planet Coaster community, come check us out on Discord. Links are down in the description below. If you guys end up enjoying what I do on the channel here, please do check out my Patreon page. And with your support, I will give back and give you guys priority spotlight and you will be featured every month that you submit a creation. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's creation. Cedar Point, created by Pitsoni, other known as Dad Pitsonka. And here he says, Hi Johnny, I myself, like many others, are thrilled to have you back. Thanks for the countless hours and effort you've put into Channel 5 Gaming. I hope you really enjoy what might be your first visit to the point through your eyes of Planet Coaster. Cedar Point is located on a Lake Erie Peninsula of Sandusky, Ohio. You'll find 12 world-breaking roller coasters as well as a numerous thrilling and family attractions. Since Planet Coaster was announced, I knew I wanted to build the most accurate presentation anyone has ever seen of this uh, of this park, and I believe I've accomplished just that. I begin the project in March 2019, and I finally met the park's completion. First of all, I'd like to thank the Steam community. Uh, if it wasn't for this tool at my disposal, this park would not be what it is. I wish I could thank every individual for their efforts and building talents. If you see any of the work, please take a bow in knowing you've cr helped create this park and be proud of it as much as I am. I myself am an avid Cedar Point visitor. I truly attempted to pack as much detail and realism that I possibly could that the game would allow from the size of the map having to condense or even eliminate certain areas of the park in some spots. There's no denying this was a lot of fun to build and watch grow. I truly hope you all enjoy this park as, as much as I did building it. It is absolutely massive and will have moments of some lag. Enjoy the coasters, enjoy the spectacular nighttime views, and lastly, enjoy your day at America's Rockin' Roller Coast. Pizzoni. All right, so an absolutely amazing description here. And I gotta say, this seems to be probably the biggest, most ambitious project that we have seen in Planet Coaster to date. We have seen the uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain way, way, way back early on in its beginning days. And I, I think some of the coaster enthusiasts picked certain things apart. And looking at this one here today, comparing it to what the real park is, I have not personally been to Cedar Point. However, I think it's on my to-do list for 2020. What I have done is I have gone in and uh, ridden all this, I think it's 17 coasters, uh, POVs on uh, YouTube. I'll try to put the POVs in the b bottom corner as we ride the coasters so you can kind of see a comparison. And I'm not going to be able to tell how close of a comparison these coasters really are until I'm editing it in the post and kind of lining them up. However, taking a quick glance at the park, they look very, very accurate. Now, because I haven't been to the park itself, I tried to watch some walk around videos, but as you could imagine, seeing a POV of someone walking through the park is extremely hard to uh, orientate where you are and what's going on. So in terms of the actual park itself, I'm not going to really know a whole lot of uh, of the, the backstories and the details and what have you. But when we get onto the coasters, we can at least look up some information on the Wikipedia and also compare it to the original coasters. But looking at a map of the Cedar Point, this is absolutely incredible. It is very accurate. So let's jump into game and begin the tour and show you guys firsthand how amazing this recreation actually is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the Cedar Point entrance. Now, before, <laughs> I mean, it is amazing how accurate this shot here is. Let's pull out and show you the overall map. It is corner to corner, and some of it had to get kind of condensed and squished down to get fit but in terms of a one-to-one -one scale, this is as close as you'll ever be able to get as this is the largest planet coaster map possible. I'm assuming he even took this into scenario mode and expanded the borders even further, whereas the original map size would probably be like this. So absolutely amazing work on this one. Uh, Pizzoni, I mean, uh, <laughs> just look at that. Absolutely amazing. So I have a map of the 
theme park up on my other monitor here. I'm gonna do my best to kind of navigate us through here. We're just gonna hit the coasters as we go through the park and just have a little bit of fun with it today. So here's your season pass, your restrooms. Let's get under the uh, gatekeeper and through the gateway and into the park. Now, we are running pretty low. FPS is pretty, it's chugging along. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should go on play mode or not. It only gives us a few frames difference at this point. So I'm not sure if that even really makes much of a difference. So if it increases the immersion factor, we might as well chill out on play mode. So as he mentioned, uh, he, he did get help from the Steam Workshop. Some of these buildings uh, probably came from the workshop, and then some of them he made himself. So really amazing stuff. I'm not sure uh, the names of all the flat rides and attractions, but I would assume Ocean Motion. He has gone to the effort to name them all. So I'll do my best to kind of click on them so we can see if in fact he's named them all. But there are something like 70 something attractions in uh, this park in total with 17 coasters and I think two water rides. So uh, definitely it was hard to study this park and, and get a, an understanding of where everything is and what everything is. All the coaster enthusiasts, all the people who have been to this park are probably freaking out right now at how accurate this is. I tried my best to do some comparisons and as far as I can tell, this is near perfect. So uh, we have the uh, chairlift here. I don't know if we should give that a ride. Maybe we'll save it to the end. Uh, but our first coaster right away is right here. I was going to say I wanted to head over to the uh, gatekeeper there as our first uh, coaster, but we kind of have to pass by the Raptor and uh, through the Kitty Kingdom to get there. So why don't we check out the first coaster of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The Raptor. It's a Bolger and Mabillard steel inverted roller coaster. It was the tallest, fastest, and longest inverted roller coaster in the world when it opened. It was also the first inverted roller coaster with a Cobra roll. Very cool. And this, this coaster was created in 1994. Now, if you go to the Wikipedia, it's kind of interesting because they have a thrill level uh, for all their coasters. And I kind of want people to leave their thrill level, uh, what they really think think would be the real thrill level for the coasters down in the comments below because this one was given uh let's see here a, f a five but the pretty much they've given every single coaster in this park a five except for the blue streak the cedar creek mine ride and the gemini are all fours and then you have the uh, wilderness run is a two and the woodstock express is a four so uh but i would definitely have to say there's certain coasters that are way more thrilling than others so if you could give this coaster here a rating out of five what would you give it and why leave your comments down below and i'd love to hear your comments for all of these coasters if you have been on it yourself in real life for me it's a little bit hard to rate it based off of a pov so let's check take a closer look at our coaster ladies and gentlemen here's a look at all the the in-game results and i'm sure some of you guys want me to head down the queue i'll leave the the, the results up there as we head down the queue uh we're gonna jump over <laughs> because look how long that queue is but there she is. And we're actually gonna climb up here. <laughs> oh, I think it actually wraps around this way. So, yeah, there it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's throw this into test mode and give it a ride.
And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely amazing. Again, I, I pre-watched these F, um, POVs a while before starting the episode. And, and so, tr trying to go off memory here, but I remember this one being one of the most extreme or intense POVs out of all of the ones that I watched. It was very radical, but it also doesn't help that you're watching it from somebody's chest cam. So... It's a little bit shaky, it's a little bit rattly, but I, I remember thinking, holy moly, this is definitely a five for thrill factor, in my opinion, just based off the uh, POV. And in terms of whether or not it's as accurate as the real ride, it looks proper in terms of layout. And I'm just gonna have to wait and see how, how well it matches up when I go into post. And uh, you guys will see a, a, a POV of the real ride in the corner, so long as I don't get copyright flagged. So if there just so happens to be a video missing from the coaster, that means it was uh, flagged and I had to remove it and re-put up the video. But if there are videos in the corner, I want to give a shout out to Coaster Crutchfield, as well as Pivot Coaster Videos and James C. I'll have a link to their channels down below as they do POV runs for their uh, theme park experiences. They, they like to upload their POV rides. And if it weren't for them, uh, I wouldn't have a proper way to uh, put that in the bottom corner of the video. So very cool stuff. That is our first coaster of the days, lady, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Raptor. Let's go take a look at uh, Raptor Hot Shots. The, some of the back area here. I think this is just meant to be a uh, sitting area. Let me put up my map here. So on the map, it says lost and found. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, the whole area is just kind of like a, a chill area. I think this is the lost and found back here. But it's actually just looking at the map alone. It's amazing how accurate these these buildings are. I mean, there's a Coca-Cola refills just around the corner. I wonder if we can actually find that here. It's a Midway Market here. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if um, all the buildings are going to be accurate. But we do have a Johnny Rockets. And I believe that is actually in the park there. Let's take a close. And it's uh, all the Midway games as well. These are absolutely amazing. We featured a lot of these on the Blueprint Spotlights throughout the history of this channel. So I've definitely remember seeing a lot of these. And we've also seen them in various other parks. Oh, look at the baby cosmic cow dolls. Oh, I love the little bit of integration of the Planet Coaster toys in there. That's amazing. That is the smallest cosmic cow I've ever seen and it's so accurate. Wow, that is absolutely phenomenal. So I do want to head over to the gatekeeper. So we're going to pass by the Johnny Rockets here. And this is, I, I, I assume this is the Kitty Kingdom area. So we got some flat rides and stuff. I'll try to click on them so we can see. So yeah, this one wasn't named. It's the uh, Astronauts. I'm not sure what ride is actually supposed to be here. But there it is, Kitty Kingdom. Some food shops here, some more rides. Cedar Downs. Hey, we got our my one of my favorite little rides, the Whir Whirly Rig. Oh, a day. The hyper spin. Yeah, not all of these have been named. Beautiful plaza area. I mean, this looks so freaking immersive. Love the Johnny Rocket side in there. More Midway games. So we got the uh, Hammer Swing, the Max Air Hammer Swing. Love the sign for that one there. Let's continue back down to these, uh, check out these Midway games here. Look at all them prizes, that is quite phenomenal. And there's our Wicked Twister. And the Gatekeeper. Get your fudge. Restrooms. Do you really want the fudge next to the restrooms? <laughs> oh, look at that side. That is amazing. 
Let's go on in. Head up this queue. So this definitely seems to be one of, uh... What I think would be one of my personal favorites throughout the park. It looks phenomenal from the POV. That brings us to our next coaster of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The Gatekeeper! Opened in 2013 by Bolger and Mabillard, a steel wing coaster that travels from the beach through the main gate. It is the tallest and longest wing coaster, as well as having the highest inversions on any roller coaster in the world. With a thrill level of five. Definitely have to agree with that based off the POVs. Let's take a look at the stats, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a look at the results, the in-game results, if you want to have a look there. And let's give this a ride. That is actually remarkable how accurate that track layout looks compared to the real one. Now, if I manage to get the real POV in the corner, they might not line up perfectly. You gotta remember that the friction in the game is different than the friction in real life, obviously. I have done it in the past where I try to edit and splice it so that they line up, but um, since we have so many coasters to go on in today, I'm just probably gonna put it up in the corner. Um, so they might not line up identically throughout the whole coaster experience, but as you can see from the layout here, it looks phenomenal. So absolutely amazing stuff. Pizzoni. <clears throat> and where should we head off to? I mean, we have the Wicked Twister right here. I mean, it is a pretty straightforward, simple coaster, but why not ride it since we're here? Uh, where does the actual queue begin on this guy? I think it's over here. I think that is correct. Takes us through here. This gated area and back around. Brings us to our next coaster of the day, the Wicked Twister, created in 2002 by Intamin. It's a steel inverted impulse roller coaster. It is currently the tallest and fastest inverted coaster in the world. Woo! And here is a quick look at all the stats, everyone. We're gonna close this big guy up and get right on it.
amazing stuff. And one thing I forgot to mention while we were on the uh, gatekeeper there, I saw there was a lot of nighttime lighting. And before I forget, I do want to take a quick look at it because he did mention it in his read. He said, enjoy the nighttime lighting as well. Let's just see how beautifully lit this entire park is before we move on. And what I might have to do, if you guys stay to the end of the video, maybe I'll throw in some bonus rides on some of the more well-lit coasters. Gatekeeper looks really well lit. Wicked Twister looks pretty well lit as well, but in-game simulation POV, it's not the most exciting ride. I, I imagine it's phenomenal in real life, but it doesn't give you the best experience in-game. The Val Raven looks pretty good, well lit. Yeah, I mean, we got, we got a lot. Holy moly. The Steel Vengeance, that looks nice. Same with the Gemini and even the Magnum XL. So we might have to revisit a few of these because they're looking pretty good at night. I mean, even the Top Thrill Dragster looks amazing there, doesn't it? Really well lit. Let's jump back to daytime here and head back down to the ground level where we left off. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do here, we're gonna check out, yeah, this is the Coca-Cola Freestyle. What is this? Is this just lockers? Oh, it's a marketplace. Some beautiful buildings here. So this, this ride here has actually got me really curious because I did not see it in the listing. We have an 18th coaster in the park, and it's called the Red Baron in his park. Now, I think what's supposed to happen here is there's supposed to be a flat ride here. I may be wrong about this, but I did not see this at all in the Wikipedia. This area is Planet Snoopy. So what he may have done instead of building the Planet Snoopy area, he just built a Red Baron versus Snoopy coaster. And I actually remember seeing this at some point in one of my spotlights, I believe. I th I'm pretty sure. I know there is a Snoopy somewhere that's not in Planet Snoopy. Here it is. This was definitely in our ride skin contest. I remember freaking about, out about this pixel art. And uh, this actually might have won in the top three of our ride skin contest. So curious to know why that's over here and not down in Planet Snoopy. Oh, well, there's a Camp Snoopy up here. That's probably why. So there's a Planet Snoopy and a Camp Snoopy. So there we go. I guess that explains it. So yeah, let's uh, let's check out this Red Baron. I mean, I don't have any stats for you guys, but that brings us to our next coaster, the Red Baron. We have a inverted two-seater boa. And let's take a look at all the results. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's take a quick look at the queue. I swear I've seen this in either a park spotlight or a coaster spotlight at some point throughout the uh, history of this channel. But uh, if anyone knows what's going on with this, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of backstory or history that I'm missing, but let's give the Red Baron a ride. So a fun little bonus coaster for you all here today in Planet Snoopy. Let's head on out uh, and head back to the main midway. Got a little restaurant here. In here, it's always Friday. Melt. <laughs> Very cool. I click on this one already. The Scrambler. Got a Monte Leone back there. Is this one uh, renamed? The Matterhorn. There you go. Hello? 
And there's the corkscrew right there. Beautiful. And look at that spectacle. Holy moly, eh? That is just a phenomenal, especially from a, like a ground level guest perspective. That is terrifying. The power towers. I think we got to quickly give this a ride, to be honest. It's almost at the top. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, that is amazing. What a view. Great view of the corkscrew there. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, we're gonna head back in uh, to the Raptor area and make our way, just take a look around, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then we'll go check out the Val Raven. Uh, we'll head up to the uh, Rogaru and the Iron Dragon. Why are all the employees depressed? There's the Val Raven there. Beautiful. Oh, there's a little car ride. I didn't even see that when I was taking a look at the uh, walk around. I think we'll pass on going on this, but here's a look at it. What is it even called? Luna Autos. So I don't think that's what it's really called. Just a little figure eight. It's fun. I wonder if there's a sign out front. No. All right, let's make sure we, uh, let's just double back a little bit. What, I, I'm assuming this is a big hotel. Quite amazing. The Cedar Downs. Okay, we, the Cedar Downs was the last thing we looked at before we head down this way. Let's make it sure I didn't forget anything. I mean, those chairlifts are so cool. We might have to check those out, depending on how long this episode goes. So, let's go check out this uh, dive coaster. It's got to be a, an entrance for the queue somewhere around here. There we go. Let's uh, definitely take the fast pass here today. <laughs> There's a look at it if you want to see. We are getting on into this fast pass. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next coaster of the day, the Val Raven, opened in 2016 by Bullisher and Malvalar. It is a steel dive coaster that opened as the tallest, fastest, and long longest of its kind in the world with an excitement rating or a thrill factor of five. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Uh, let's take a closer look at the results in game. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's all the results if you want to see them. And let's give this a ride. Oh darn, looks like we got some fireworks on this dive coaster. Might be another one to check out at night time.
absolutely amazing. I think we're gonna have to revisit this one at nighttime. It's definitely gonna be a long episode, you guys. I think this creation deserves uh, an extended length of a video. So we're just gonna let it ride out to be as long as it is. Look at that, my goodness. Guys, I'm abruptly cutting this in because I think I forgot the Blue Streak opened in 1964, Philadelphia toboggan coasters, a wooden coaster. It is the oldest operating coaster at Cedar Point. Here's a look at all the in-game results, everyone. And we have one departing right now. Beautifully done. Hopefully I didn't forget any other coasters because this park takes a freaking lifetime to open up. <laughs> so there it is, everybody. Back to whatever I was talking about last. Uh, so I want to head down the Millennium Midway next. There's going to be three coasters to hit off. And then we'll uh, head up to Frontier Town and hit up some more coasters. And then we'll come back around kind of like the Cedar Point Beachway and uh, check out some of the... Uh, other coasters on that side of the park. So we're just gonna squeeze on through here. Look at this, we got a coasters drive-in. Another restaurant. Oh, this is the the Frontier Trail and the the Millennium Midway leading to the Frontier Trail. So this must be the um, uh, Iron Dragon. And then we have the. Okay, so this is. The Monster Jam Thunder Alley. They probably do a bunch of shows and stuff here. That's quite fun. Let's take a quick peek at this at nighttime. It's very cool. Some pyrokinetics in there. Amazing. Selena. It's so weird not having any guests at the park, but we cannot open it up because uh, we're already having a huge FPS hit. Um, but it is what it is. What's this? This is a little train ride? Rio Bravo. Let's just give this a little scoot around and see where it takes us. So train crossing here. Does it take us around the whole park? Holy moly. I'm trying to look on the map here, and it looks like it goes quite the ways. Whoops. Oh, we're gonna run into a train here. Ah! <laughs> and another. Holy good googly moogly. Takes us right down to the marina, it looks like. Oh, right by the Millennium Force. That is remarkable. I'm excited about that coaster. That definitely looks like uh, one, uh, one of, if not the most intense coaster in the park. Actually, the Steel Vengeance looks absolutely insane. Uh, I definitely have to come to Cedar Park next year. And everybody's been 
telling me to come do one of these community meetups and uh, I think I could make the trip to Cedar Point. Okay, so let's pop down here again. And we got a couple coasters to visit here. So, let's uh, jump, wait, is this, this is not the queue. Where's the queue? Here's the queue. I'm not sure if this goes to the Rogaroo. Is it the Rogaroo? Rogaroo? Or the um, Steel Dragon? Or Iron Dragon? All right, ladies and gentlemen. So it looks like this is, in fact, the Iron Dragon. Opened in 1987 by Aerodynamics, a steel suspended roller coaster. Supports were painted yellow for the 20, 2004 season. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a closer look at all the stats. Here you go. And uh, let's throw this back into test mode and give it a ride. So there it is. Uh, on the Wikipedia, this one also has a thrill rating of a 5. And I simply cannot say that that seems as thrilling as something as the Steel Vengeance or the Millennium Force. I'd probably say it's more of a 3 to be accurate. But what do you guys think? Have you ridden this? What would you give it on a thrill rating? I'd say the lift is absolutely amazing. Looking at the top turtle dragster there and the Millennium Force, we definitely got to hit that up. But we got the uh, Rogaroo right there. So let's make our, am I saying that right? Rogaroo or Rogaro? Not exactly sure. Let's head on over and check this guy out. Dippin' Dots. Hey, get your Dippin' Dots. Dragon's in. There it is, the Rogaro. Oh, <laughs> this one definitely looks exciting. Where is the entrance for this big guy? The turn off there. I 
canopies are floating kind of bugs me. <laughs> Is there nothing holding those up? I guess it's like pinned to the supports. No, maybe not. Okay, let's head on up. Brings us to our next coaster of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The Rogaro. Rogaro. <laughs> I did look it up and I already forgot. So this was created in 1996 by Ballager and Mabillard. It is a steel floorless coaster, previously known as the Mantis, which was the tallest, fastest, and steepest stand-up roller coaster in the world when it opened in 1996. Rogaro opened in 2015 as a renovated version of the Mantis, featuring new trains, new colors, and a new theme. Boom. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at the ride stats in game. There it is. Let's close this bad boy down and give it a go. So definitely an amazing track layout on this one. Now, this one also gets a, a thrill factor of five, which doesn't seem inaccurate. But again, compared to some of the bigger coasters in this park, it's hard to, you know, put it there. Now, that's the problem when you rate things out of five, because there's a big difference of, of, between a, like a four out of five compared to like a nine out of 10. So I guess you could give it like a 4.5 if you were to go in the decimals. And that's probably where I would probably rate it maybe a 4, 4.5. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. <laughs> Still looks like an amazing coaster, uh, and it, definitely one that I would uh, not skip over had I come to this park. All right, that saves the big boy. How do we get over to the Millennium Force? Oh, right there. <laughs> Can't miss it. Oh, good googly moogly. Now, I'd love to know, what is your favorite coaster in Cedar Point? Leave your comments down below. Uh, based off of just the POVs, and I, I mean, I can't, I have to, I have to wait and see. Because I have, the POVs, 
it's like, what do I base it off of? Do I base it off of the POVs that I've seen online or do I base it off of what I experienced here today in this park? So I think I got to hold my uh, thoughts on what I think is my favorite and I just base it off of my experience that Pitzoni has provided us here today and uh, just, you know, make a an opinion, make my opinion based off of my favorite coaster of his recreation. But look at that. This is definitely going to be up there in the top three, I would imagine. The Millennium Force. Opened in 2000, created by Intamin, a steel giga roller coaster. It set several records when it opened, such as the tallest, fastest, and steepest roller coaster in the world. Holy good googly moogly. Let's get on it, shall we? Oh, first, let's take a look at the stats. If you want to see them, there's a quick look at them, and let's delay no further. Uh, that is incredible. I want to see the actual in-game max speeds 94 miles an hour. Oh, good googly moogly. I got to say, you guys, my recording, I mean, it's going to be edited down a bit for you guys, but I'm at a, almost coming up on an hour here, and I've been on the edge of my seat to this entire episode. Uh, this is quite the creation. I got to say, if I were to give an award out so far, out of all the creations I've ever seen, the recreations I've ever seen, this would definitely hands down get the... Uh, the, the recreation park medal, in my opinion. We're gonna have to do a coaster awards one day, a Channel 5 Gaming Coaster Awards, a three years of uh, creations, and we'll, we'll, we'll hand select some of the uh, most deserving winners for the recreations, the most deserving winners for set categories, and we'll just go through and uh, have everybody vote and maybe make a, a nice video that summarizes the last three. Oh, that's the slingshot. Oh my god. What is that actually called? On the map it's saying, like, new in 2019 Cedar Point Forbidden Frontier on Adventure Island. I don't think that's what the slingshot's called. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't select it to find out the name, so hopefully there's a sign. So, But this is Adventure Island here. We got a blacksmithy. So cool. Beautiful details here. I remember seeing this area in the walk around video that I uh, watched and it's and the guy walked by the slingshot 
Uh, that is incredible. See, I've never been on a slingshot, but I've been on a drop zone. The one where they just drop you straight down. And uh, there was a video of it. I was I was a little bit younger. I was probably like 10, 12 years old. Not exactly sure. But uh, I remember I clinched my neck so much. Like did the... Uh... <laughs> The corners of my mouth went straight down and into my neck. I remember pulling my neck muscles. I was so, like, my gut dropped so far down. And my face dropped. And we got that on video. I'd never seen myself make, I didn't even know my face could make those expressions. Um, having said that, I don't think I would go on a slingshot. Well, maybe the slingshot creates, it's it's not a, I think it's the free fall that scares me. And that's also another thing. I could not breathe during that 10 second free fall in the drop zone or whatever it was. I couldn't imagine like skydiving because if I can't breathe in a 10 second free fall and I'm uh, uh, struggling to breathe how, how do you how do you catch your breath while you're skydiving that seems absolutely insane to me but a slingshot is more of a shoot you forward like uh, the g-forces are completely different it's not a free fall but once you're up in the air and you're coming back down it's free falling with force that would be even more terrifying <laughs> Could imagine. Um, and it, it something's just so sketchy about just being slingshot and held onto by cables. It just seems so uh, freakish to me. I would not trust it, even though, you know, thousands, if not millions, of people have been on one of those and uh, it's safe. It just doesn't seem like something humans should do <laughs> slingshot themselves into the air. Uh, this is uh, quite the big area here. Lots going on. Got a nice. Oh, this is the um, the log flume, isn't it? Which what's this one called here? Cedar? No, that's not it. I don't think they actually label it on the map. We're gonna have to click it. Whoa! What did I just do? <laughs> it's, apparently, it's a river rapids. Oh, <laughs> the thunder rapids. Okay, so it's not a log flume. It's a r th uh, river rapids. Apparently, I like tried picking it up. <laughs> Like, bat, I, I fat fingered a bunch of buttons at once. Frontier Town. Oh, wait. Is this the same ride? It goes overhead? Oh, I love that loading area. Okay, somehow I selected that, but then selected this. So that is the log flume. Snake River Falls. Oh, it's a Cascade water coaster. Man, wrong twice. <laughs> the only rides I did not look up online were the water coasters. I figured, you know what? We'll just check them out when we get to them. So there they are. I say we should try to ride one of these. We slow down the momentum, save some of the good coasters for later, and uh, just enjoy a nice, relaxing uh, river rapids. So here we go. Uh, this is the Thunder Rapids. I don't think I did an intro for this one. It's called Thunder Canyon. Opened in 19. 1986 by Intamin, a river rafting ride. Thunder Canyon normally closes late August and is transformed into Hollow Weekends attraction called Corn Stalkers. Cool. Let's give it a ride. Got a few object collision issues on this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
I thought for maybe just a second there when I accidentally moved it that that would have been the cause of it, but everything else seems to be so well lined up that that can't be the case. So there it is, everybody. I'm actually going to stop my recording and, and start a new one because I did notice my mic was muted going into this ride and I'm hoping I didn't miss this whole segment of me talking. So now I just got to double check it, see if I have to re-record a little bit. So I'll be back in a second. All right, thank goodness we are okay there. Uh, I think I just, I'm so used to muting my mic when I get on a ride so that, and unmuting it. It looks like we have the Maverick here. Uh, that's, we're okay. What do we have over here? The Skyhawk. Um, I think we should try to make our way over to this, uh, Cascade. Water coaster. I don't think I have an intro for this one either, but this is the Snake River Falls. Let's see if the Wikipedia says anything about it. Snake River Falls opened in 1993 by Aerodynamics. A, sh uh, a shoot the shoot, shoot the shoot ride uh, is open as the tallest and fastest water ride in the world with a drop of 80 feet, 24 meters. Hooey! That's uh, quite incredible. So there's a look at all the stats, everybody, and let's uh, shoot the shoot. <laughs> And there it is, everybody. All right, let's go check out the rest of Frontier Town here and head on over to the Maverick and Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance, I'm really excited to check out. Uh, actually, we have the Cedar Creek Mine Ride here. How do we even get on there? You go through the church? Oh, that's a bathroom. I remember seeing the POV for this and thinking, oh, oh, oh that looks sketchy. <laughs> Just a little sketchy. This looks a little bit old. I'm going to have to see the date here when it was open. Let's check out this coaster, ladies and gentlemen. The Cedar Creek Mine Ride opened in 1969 by Aerodynamics, a steel mine train hybrid roller coaster. And this one has a thrill level of four, but I'd have to put that thrill level at six because you feel like it's going to fall apart on you while you're on it. <laughs> Holy good googly moogly. Uh, just old things get me scared. And I think that alone would put my freaking anxiety through the roof. So let's take a look at the stats here in game. There they are. And let's give it a ride. I think we'll actually, because this thing gets in the way, we're just going to actually go into... Um, 
track view. We uh, live to see another day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. So, where to next? Got a little car ride. Another car ride. Saw one earlier. Um, Village Square Auto. Let's just give it a little boot around. Pay tribute to the scenery. I actually feel similar to the one that uh, the game <gasps> comes with. Alrighty. Let's make our way out of here. Hey, it's the Snoopy again. So we must be near Camp Snoopy here. some more shops. Oh, here we got the, uh, what is this guy? It's the one of the little kitty coasters, isn't it? There's two, actually. Well, before we check those out, um, really want to get on this Steel Vengeance. Oh, we have another slingshot ride here. We got the Gemini there as well. That is the Gemini. I must have, that's, that's the cue for the, uh, slingshot. I must have completely missed the entrance to the Steel Vengeance. Let's do a little backtrack here. Whole little area back here. And the Maverick, of course. Definitely hit the Maverick up first. Since we're right here. The Old West was never this wild. There's the queue. Wow, quite the queue. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The Maverick opened in 2007 by Intamin, a steel launched roller coaster. With its 95 degree drop, it is the steepest roller coaster in the park with a thrill rating of five. And here's a look at the in-game statistics, everybody, and let's give it a ride.
All right, very good recreation of the Maverick there. What did you guys think? Let's go check out the Steel Vengeance. We got to figure out how to get over there. Oh, I see the sign. We got to pass through all these food shops. Uh, uh, uh. Steel Vengeance. <laughs> Based on the POVs, this thing looks absolutely insane. We're going to go through the fast pass here. I don't even think the fast pass is very fast. Okay, maybe it is. Ho 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 ho. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Steel Vengeance opened in 2018 by Rocky Mountain Construction, a steel hybrid coaster that opened as the tallest, longest, and fastest of its kind in the world. Boom. <laughs> good, 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 googly moogly. Look at these stats, everybody. We're going to have to close this down and get right on it. All right, I love me a good RMC uh, based on Planko RMCs. Now time to real, ride a real recreation. Woo! <laughs> that is absolutely freaking ridiculous. My goodness, I don't even know if I could withstand going on that in real life. Oh, that is intense. Wow. Certainly lives up to the hype. Absolutely amazing. Let's take a top bird's eye view of that. How do you even try to go about recreating that and getting that track layout just right? That is impressive. Very impressive. Whew. All right. The fun doesn't end there, ladies and gentlemen. This is the craziest, longest uh, park spotlight we have seen in a very long time. We have a long ways to go yet. How many more coasters do we have here? Uh, I want to say at least three. About three. So, well, no, we got these kitty coasters as well. So five? Yeah. Not even close to being done yet. So, <laughs> go refill your drinks. Refill your popcorn, because we're going to be at it still for a, quite a while. Look at all these w midway games. A climbing challenge. Shoot the hoops like Erie Eagles. 
Very cool. Pipe scream. Top thrill dragster. So how do we get back here to these uh, little kitty coasters? So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have the wilderness run. <laughs> wilderness run developed or opened in 1979 by Intimate, a steel children's roller coaster previously known as the Junior Gemini until 2014. It was the first roller coaster manufactured by Intamin. Uh, entrance was moved to Camp Snoopy and renamed the Wilderness Run in 2014. Now, not much to look at with the results on this one. It is literally the smallest coaster I've ever seen. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it goes through twice. Okay, good. <laughs> it better go through twice. <laughs> better go through three times. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I actually watched the POV for this one, too. It's the exact same. It's great. Although the POV did feel a little bit longer. All right, it does go through three times, but we don't need to do that. There it is, everybody. So we have one more over here as well. I'm not really sure how to get into this one. The uh, actual queue's back here in Snoopy Town. Here we go. The Woodstock Express, everybody. Here it is. The Woodstock Express. Opened in 1999 by Vacoma, a junior steel roller coaster is located in Camp Snoopy. And here's a look at all the results. And let's give it a ride. Uh, this one we're also going to have to do track view. All right, very fun little junior. Let's head over to some more big boy coasters. <clears throat> there we go, the Gemini. We didn't click on this guy, the monster. So the entrance to the Gemini was over here, I believe. Which one is the proper queue? Is it a, oh yeah, it's a dual queue because it's a dual dueling coaster. So we're just gonna go down one of these and see what we get. I don't think there's any need to ride it twice. Uh, both the tracks are very similar. So here we go. That brings us to the Gemini, opened in 1978 by Aerodynamics, a steel racing hybrid roller coaster. It was marketed as the tallest, fastest, and longest when it was opened. Boom. Uh, now, because this one is dual synchronized, we don't want to close it down. We're just going to wait until it shows up, and here it is. There's a look at all the stats. It looks like we're getting on the red Gemini here today.
absolutely amazing. There it is. Let's take a top down look at this. Whew, quite a nice layout on that one. Now, I'm really curious because the, um, the Magnum XL takes you through the water park. I'm really curious to know if uh, there's an actual water park in this recreation or not. I guess we're going to have to go over and see. So, it should be just through here. This is where the water park area would be. And there's the Magnum XL. So, this is a parking lot, but no water park. That's completely understandable because there's no water rides in this game. You'd have to build them all from scratch. Now, where do we actually get on the boarding station? Ah, right there. I still don't understand how to get in here. Oh, here we go. The Magnum XL. Oh, that's actually a really cool sign. The way they tilt the uh, top bits there. All right. Very cool building here. Here we are, the Magnum XL 200, opened in 1989 by Aerodynamics, a steel hyper coaster. It was the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world when it opened, and I have a cat climbing on me uh, with a thrill rating of a five. We're gonna kick you out of the room, kitty. All right, and here's a look at the stats. We're gonna open this guy back up. All right, uh, because this thing's in the way, I think it's probably best that we go into track view. We have two more coasters left to go on the top thrill dragster and the corkscrew and there she is right there I gotta say I think I would be m most terrified to go on the top thrill even more so than the Millennium Force There's something about going straight up and straight down It kind of freaks me out just looking at the height of that even though the Millennium Force is probably a lot more terrifying in uh in every way possible just the idea of how tall that is how fast it goes <laughs> 
uh, and straight up and straight down. It just scares the bejesus out of me. So I think out of all the ones that I might chicken out on, it might be this one, to be honest. So, uh, where's our cue here? Looks like it wraps around through here. It's, nope. I have no idea, to be honest. It doesn't actually look like the cue's properly set up. Or is it? Okay, it goes all the way back through here. And here we go. Maybe it's the exit that's not properly set up. That is quite the cue. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Top Thrill Dragster, opened in 2003 by Intamin, a steel strata accelerator roller coaster. It was the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world when it opened. Whew. Cedar Point just breaking records left, right, and center. Here's a look at the stats, everyone, and let's give it a ride. Go in and seat view for this guy. Here we go. See, I think everybody has a natural fear uh, of heights. It's just a common thing that freaks us all out. It's whether or not you can get used to it or not. But with this, you go up and you're up there for such a little amount of time and you're already back down. It might not be as terrifying as the, anti the, the anticipation of going up this cable lift. You're just looking off to the side, you're looking down, and you're freaking thinking, oh frick, oh frick, oh frick, oh frick, what have I done, what have I done, what have I done, what have I done? And then you get to the top and you're just slowly climbing over that. Um, I think the anticipation there makes this one so much worse because you just have to sit there and think about there's no turning back <laughs> whereas with the top thrill you're get you're in the seat you're like okay this isn't so bad you see the light going off and then whoosh you shoot off and you're uh you know you're at the top and back down before you know it it kind of just it's like ripping off a band-aid you know so maybe maybe uh i take back what i was thinking i still think looking at that from uh you know oh should i go on that still freaks the heck out of me but uh i think after you know getting on and done with it i think the uh millennium force would scare me more and i mean the steel vengeance is like a whole nother story isn't it that drop there uh all right, we have one more coaster to check out. Let's just take a second to appreciate this hotel. What's the build count on this thing? Hopefully we don't crash my game. 11,000. Jesus, that is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, wow. I think we did a thorough walk around. Um, sorry if I didn't pay as much details to the little things. I knew we had a lot to visit here today. Um, it's hard to pay attention to all the little nooks and crannies, the shops, different things. But I tried my best to uh, at least uh, pan by at a, at a reasonable speed. But uh, I think we got a pretty decent look at everything here today. Um, I did my best with the queues. I know you guys all want me to take a time to appreciate the cues, but in terms of going down them like this, I mean, you could download it yourself. There's a link in the description and you can walk your way all the way down the queue to your heart's content. Uh, I know some people just get outraged the fact that I didn't walk every square meter of the queue, but that would have brought it up to two and a half hours. So we're not doing that here today. And here we are, the final coaster of the day. We have the Corkscrew. Opened in 1976 by Aerodynamics, a steel roller coaster that spans the midway. It is the first roller coaster with three inversions and the first coaster to span a midway when it came open. Very cool. All right, here's a look at all the in-game statistics, everybody. And let's close it down and give it a ride.
amazing stuff. Pits only, absolutely amazing recreation on this one here today. I feel like uh, we still have a lot to talk about before the episode's over. It's been probably one of the longest episodes I've done on a park spotlight, but definitely well worth it. Uh, I can't believe how much time and effort and uh, precision you put into making this all to scale. I mean, this is a, a coaster enthusiast dream park recreation right here. And Cedar Point does it right. You know, after watching all the POVs, seeing some walk around tours of the park, riding the coasters in game myself, it's really hard to pick a favorite because every coaster does something different and unique. Obviously, the Steel Vengeance is just uh, just ridiculous. And, um, you know, I like a good RMC. It's just fast and furious, dynamic. It's all over the place. It, it, it's, I think, the newest attraction in Cedar Point. I mean, it just rips. So that's definitely going to just default as my favorite. But then how do you pick another? one there's so many good ones for so different so many different reasons um you know obviously the gatekeeper is just a, an amazing winged coaster uh, i love the fact that it passes right over the uh the gate entrance there and what did the wiki say about it here um the tallest and longest wing coaster as well as having the highest inversion on any roller coaster in the world and i think every one of these sets its own records right uh so I definitely think that one's really great. The dive coaster is phenomenal. Um, I actually really enjoyed the Rogaru. Rogaru. I really liked that one. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And obviously the Millennium Force is just insanely fast in this game it was ripping at 97 miles per hour it's absolutely ridiculous so I, I seriously can't pick a favorite uh simply because i haven't been on them in real life i think after riding them in real life i would have my own personal favorites for certain reasons but in terms of just riding them inside a planko i mean the povs can't consider those uh they're just too jittery and stuff so i have to go off of what i experienced here today and again i like them all for their own different reasons um so <sighs> If I were to do a top five, it'd be like the Steel Vengeance, the Gatekeeper, the Millennium Force, the Rugaroo, and the um, the Valver the Val Raven. Yeah, I think that'll be my top five. But they're all pretty cool for their own reasons. And uh, I did say we were going to do a nighttime run. And I think because the episode's running so long, we got to at least do one. And I think that is going to be the Val Raven. So let's give this guy a nighttime run.
Interesting that we didn't get to see the firework effects this time around. We saw them at daytime. I wonder maybe if they're not actually associated with the ride at all. But look at this park at nighttime. Absolutely beautiful job at lighting all this up. Looks phenomenal. Super realistic. I mean, hats off to you, Pizzoni. <laughs> Absolutely the best recreation that we have seen yet on the channel. And that is uh, truly a feat. Um, <laughs> holy freaking moly. What do you even say? Leave your comments down below for Pizzoni, you guys. What did you think of his park? Have you been to Cedar Park? How accurate was this? And, you know, what was your favorite coaster overall? What is your favorite coaster in Cedar Park? What was your favorite uh, recreation of his park? Um, you know, fire away in the comments. I'm sure Pizzoni would love to read what you guys have to say about this creation. So will I. And uh, I want to give Pizzoni a big shout out, a thank you, as he is a silver patron. Not sure if I mentioned that in the beginning or not, but uh, thank you so much for your support. And uh, if you guys want to become a patron and support the show and get your creation seen every month, you can do so by following the link down in the description below. Once you are a patron, uh, you will get pr spotlight priority and you will be featured every single month. Um, boom. And also come join us on Discord so you can see these amazing creators create the stuff right before your eyes as they share images on a daily basis in the Planko screenshots discussion rooms. So there you guys go. It is open to the public. Links are down below. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please be sure to leave a like if you're new to the channel subscribe for more daily planet coaster content and thank you all so much for watching i hope you all have a wonderful day and a happy new year and i will see you in the next video bye now